it's like a dream come true, to be honest with you. It's um, what's encouraged here is creativity and pushing the limits and breaking the rules even if you need to, 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 to really have a, a great experience created for the kids. We do way more science here than any other school does. We focus on 21st century skills, which include um, things like collaborating with others, um, creativity, um, innovation, digital media. What makes it different is um, we have life to it. The experiential learning, problem-based learning, critical thinking, kids are doing projects that expand cross-curricular. I challenge myself every day, challenge the students, challenge the system, challenge the methods, and, and it's okay to do that. It's, it's interesting and it's, and it's dynamic and it's, and it's interactive for them and they can get their hands dirty and they can really get involved in this. You know, we put that pizzazz, that thing that you wanted to do as a kid, that experience, that um, just thing that you'll never forget. My goal is every week they do something they'll never forget. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It helps meet the needs of so many students that right now may otherwise not have a, a place or a passion for something. Many students are passionate about science and math. And that's really what science is all about, is having a question and then trying to figure out how to solve that question or find answers to it. Uh, we start with a problem, like studying space and how do scientists and astronauts get information about our solar system and things that are unknown. And, and then from there, the students are developing their own questions, as scientists would, and then developing a way to answer those questions. And being able to, to show how science and math and technology and engineering, they can all be inter, you know, intertwined and how we can uh, teach that to our students because it's what's happening right now in the real world. Problem-based learning is when you are studying something. So for instance, we're doing insects. Um, we talked about the mountain pine beetle and we think about what insects are in Colorado. What are them? What are they that are native here? So the bees are, there was an influx of grasshoppers. The moths were horrible this year. Then mountain pine beetle. So what are those are that are problems that you're interested in? So everything that we have in our life can be a problem or it can be a solution. So we take that problem and we say, how can we make it a solution? Now burrowing into a pine beetle. Now burrowing into a tree. The tree dies when the mountain pine beetle. Okay. Make sure that all people are participating, that collaboration piece is that everybody feels identified and has a role. You know, I've taught insects before and I never taught it like this. So them um, coming up and video recording or putting together a Prezi to present, they're learning some really big life skills how to talk in front of people, how to organize, how to participate, how to articulate. But I want them to see life, our whole entire universe is science. Rebecca thought that not writing in the Septimus was the least of Helena's problems, but she knew how important this kind of thing was to girls in Temple Mead. Or, there's always next year. What we designed this to do is to help the students um, really find their way through the problem, engineer their own solutions and test them to see if they would actually work. They're working on what we call the Jamestown Project where they are basically re-engineering history. They're taking a look at either a ship, a fort, or a pout in the outpost village and seeing how they could either alter or redesign some of the engineering of the day to improve the monetary gain. Could we have made it better? Could we have increased uh, the survival rate of the colonists? Uh, could we have made life more bearable. Uh, there's a reason it was known as the Age of Agony. It's directly across from the entrance, so they can escape this way if they have to. They're also going to need to present this to a panel of experts. We have uh, military experts coming in, we have engineers coming in, we have people from the Historical Society coming in. They are put in situations where they have to design stuff, they have to figure out what to do, and without just memorizing a procedure or memorizing what a teacher is telling them to do. They're the thinkers. To turn it, this would have to go that way and this would have to go that way. But if they're connected, it, it could 
they'd have to go both in the same direction. So, it's kind of interesting how they designed this. It's really fun. Uh, I partnered with School of Minds this last summer, so she helped us design catapults with reverse engineering, and the kids learned about isometric views, and they got to use screwdrivers and power drills and build a frame and then determine their variables with how many springs, how long do you want them to be, how short, how much force, and where do you want your stop string. And they experimented with tennis balls and then we went out to the berry patch farms for Halloween and launched pumpkins and had a contest to see who could go the farthest. We get to do a lot of fun stuff like engineering and science. So today we're making scarecrow glyphs and the kids are answering questions depending on what their glyph is. Being able to answer questions about data, so that's a huge piece in kindergarten. When we say, here's the structure and this is what it should look like and go ahead and build it, that's way different than here's your supplies and let's build some color sorters or Humpty Dumpty keeps falling off of the wall. How can you make a safe wall for Humpty using Lego blocks? and they have to figure out what they can do with that. And I just know now that they can do it. And I have so much faith in them, and they get so excited. And yesterday at Science, we had these uh, solar cars, and they run from the sun. The challenge is combining the love and passion for traditional music education with everything that's available to us now. Because we is that create and explore and go into new areas that we couldn't before. It's very hard to do what I do without the technology. And they can learn so fast when we can keep up with them. And that's good. Let's give them a round of applause. Awesome. This is a new invention. The person who invented it from Belgium is working with us. Each cube is a computer. It has infrared sensors on all sides. And we can program th them to do what we want. And that kicks off sound clips. It's definitely problem-based learning, and, and it can be very high-tech uh, if the kids are ready for that. It can be very simple. The kids can go with their phones and record something and email me a sound clip, and I can drop it into this computer program and we can build a composition around it. So they seem to be very, very drawn um, to this technology. It just sort of uh, piques their interest. There is no greatness without risk. And there is no greatness without failure. And I think one of the best ways to take, to get students to take risks is to take risks yourself in front of students. And to fail sometimes, and to make mistakes, and to be human. Um, those kind of things allow them to see that even, even you know, grown-ups and teachers um, have to take risks that they fail at sometimes in order to get better. I wanted to be part of something that is different, innovative, on the cutting edge, 21st century, instead of just saying it, um, doing it. I want to do it. We are valuing creativity more than ever before. And for me, the challenge is to, to take that love for creativity, which I've always had as a musician, and then make sure that every kid is able to explore that passion and, and bring that passion to life. To try things to see if you can reach uh, not only new heights of understanding, but create new approaches that the kids can really get into and really understand and that they really want to take off from that point themselves. When you go to any kind of science conference and you say what you're doing in second grade, they're like, no, that's for high schoolers. And you're like, no, these second graders are doing this stuff. And people don't believe it. They can build Excel tables. That they know how to work an Excel spreadsheet, Word. They know how to go to the internet. I think we're just a little bit more open here and letting the kids be open-minded and have um, a part in their learning. I don't think you can teach reading without teaching writing. I don't think you can teach math without teaching science. I don't think you can teach reading without teaching science. You can sometimes be in places where, you know, this is the way we do it. <laughs> we really don't want to challenge that. <laughs> and here I feel like I'm expected to challenge that. And I love it. You know, schools are set up the same way they've been set up for 50, 100 years. Something has to change, and I'm hoping to be that change agent. My goal at STEM is that every single person gets to um, explore their creativity through music in multiple ways, through multiple uh, 
forms of media and traditional approaches. It's also the most rewarding place I've ever worked. People not only care about what they're doing, they're, they're wickedly passionate about it. And you can go out and you can celebrate um, not only the students learning, but celebrate the passion of teaching and the passion of education in general. I love it. I do, I do, I do, I do. We do have a number of community partners, in between 20 and 30 partners currently, and they play a variety of roles. Um, DeVry University has been a strong force, Time Warner, we have the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, um, I know people from the Astronomy Society have come. Um, we have a number of partners which are growing rapidly. The business partnerships are very important. I think it sends a message to the community that schools are not by themselves anymore. They have this vision that what we're doing here is important and they're looking at these students as the next generation that will be in their workforce. They are always amazed at what the students are accomplishing here. Our test scores were very good. My math scores were 76 percent proficient um, and that's higher than the state average. Um, reading and writing scores were higher or met district average um, and higher than state average, which is amazing because we're not uh, testing students to attend STEM. They are based on lottery, and so those students are just drawn, and so we have special ed students, we have um, English as second language learner students, we have gifted and talented students, and um, we're not discriminating based on the students that come. So we have 420 students approximately currently, K through seven, and uh, over 400 on the wait list. The parents are, are saying, we want something different that we can do in a public school. They don't want to go to a charter school or a private school, they want it to be happening in the public school, and they're dedicated to that. We love the school. We think that it, it uh, really meets the needs for, for what we feel like kids need to be learning nowadays. We like the fact that it's not traditional. They love to come. They yeah, love to come to yeah, 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 yeah. He's always engaged. There's not a single day when the boy does not want to come to school. More hands-on learning. Um, lots of experience, teachers. She likes to problem solve. She likes to learn how to get from one step to the last. It's a blessing for us that we would have this opportunity. I feel like it was a, a lucky break for our family. If, you're, if you have a child that, that you want to just really explore and, you want, and they're willing to, and they want to learn more and they're curious about things, this is the right environment for them. If we're going to have an impact on students, they have to see the joy that we bring to a subject or we bring to a classroom and, and the love that we have uh, for teaching and for the subjects that we teach. It's invigorating. I've never really worked harder before. More hands-on work for the kids. Um, the problem-based learning is obviously different. We're the only school that does engineering, and so that's been really exciting to be a part of. Yeah, I have been a lifelong learner. I have a passion for learning myself and for sharing that with students. And so working at STEM has really helped me to learn more, and, and it's, so it's ignited my passion. I want to be creating and inventing and doing what we want the kids to do and for our country. Like I want them to feel inspired and connected to making a difference. Being allowed to kindle that fire and let it burn, you know, so that it's shooting out of your eyes while you're doing your job and while you're teaching is really fun and the kids see that.